the history of the 159 model began with the cooperation of the Fiat concern with the GM concern. In 2000, there was still no talk of Fiat buying the third largest American manufacturer in direct competition in the largest automotive market. Fiat, in tandem with GM, took over the development of the small car platform and provided diesel engine technology, while GM was responsible for the elements of the premium platform and mid-sized gasoline engines and transmissions for them. However, I already mentioned this story in the story about Fiat Punta. Cooperation in the field of creating Class B Plus machines went well, but with the premium platform for Alfa Romeo and Lancia cars, the situation is not so good. The new premium platform was planned to be modular, and based on the use of front, all-wheel, and rear-wheel drive. It was planned to be used for Cadillac and Buick cars, as well as for European Opel and Saab with several wheelbase sizes. Moreover, the upper limit of application was designated as premium business sedans, that is, Class E cars according to European specifications. The company coped with the task. Fiat was responsible for the body, and the Americans and Swedes represented by Saab were responsible for the engineering systems and passive safety. But GM was not happy with the result, the weight of the body was too big due to the obviously redundant capabilities, and the cost of production was quite high. After receiving a billion in compensation, GM transferred all rights to the new platform to Fiat, and the latter also received the rights to the engines of the GM Ecotec L850 Generation I-2 family in the four-cylinder version with direct injection and the Ecotec V6. For example, the Z22YH engine on Opel is just a close relative of the Alpha 2.2 JTS engine, but not its complete copy. Fiat had the right to make its own changes and produce components for the platform, which it took full advantage of. By the time the Alpha 159 appeared, the Italians were the sole owners of a very advanced platform on which it was possible to create a whole range of models for every taste and color. However, the potential was not fully used, the mass of the body really turned out to be large for a small car, and the company did not dare to release a large premium sedan. So premium is the basis of only three cars, Alfa Romeo 159, Brera and Spider. Strong and heavy, more than 1,600 kilograms, the body, tailored to Swedish safety standards, stands firmly on the road thanks to the double wishbone suspension at the front and the multi-link at the rear. The developed front subframe provides an excellent level of noise and vibration isolation even for diesel engines, the interior is noticeably more spacious than its predecessor, and in general the car has become much more solid. After restyling, the body was lightened by 45 kilograms due to the greater use of aluminum and high-strength steels but the car still remained 100 to 150 kilograms heavier than most competitors. In addition to Italian diesel engines of 1.9 to 2.4 liters, for the first time on Alfa Romeo you can find engines developed by GM. This is a simple 1.8 liter engine with distributed injection, analogous to the Opel Z18 XER, a very massive 2.2 liter engine with direct injection, which is a variation on the Z22YH theme with phase shifters and with a power of 185 horsepower and finally the big 3.2 liter v6 from holden's gm high feature series here you can also find opal's f17 and m32 manual transmissions and the eyes and tf80 sc automatic transmission supplied under agreement with gm which the italians know as qtronic and even the seal speed robot here with roots from gm is based on the get rag m32 box manufactured by opal do not be surprised that the Opel Saab dimension of rims, 5X110 is also a legacy of GM. In general, there are surprisingly many compatible elements. Here in brake discs, and hubs, and part of the electronics, and air conditioning. But the car has no direct analogs in the GM lineup. Like any product of a symbiosis of technologies from different companies, the Alfa Romeo 159 is an ambiguous car. In any case, there is definitely criticism in terms of reliability. But in practice, everything is not so scary. In terms of interior quality, appearance, and handling, the car clearly did not lag behind the products of the big German three of those years, and bad reviews were primarily associated with vibrations, insufficient interior space, high fuel consumption, a limited choice of automatic transmissions, troublesome electrical parts and not particularly brand-friendly services. Most of the reviews about the indecently small resource of engines, suspensions, and transmissions turned out to be just rumors. In addition, Alfa Romeo is poorly represented in our market. There are very few specialized services, and complex designs require skills, 
dealer scanners and knowledge that multi-brand service masters do not have. And the services specializing in fiat cars look with surprise at cars on this platform. In general, from the point of view of service, the situation is quite difficult. It is worth remembering that this is a modern car on an advanced platform, a competitor to the third series of BMW and the C-Class from Mercedes. And it doesn't have to be very cheap to maintain. The main thing, the car has charisma and a sense of quality. Well, how this explosive mixture behaves in operation, read below. Nevertheless, the age of more than 10 years in the first copies already makes it possible to form an objective opinion. Body. Galvanization on Fiat slash Alfa Romeo appeared back in the 80s, and in terms of anti-corrosion protection, Alfa Romeo cars still look good. True, there is a nuance. Galvanization of the outer panels does not yet mean good anti-corrosion protection and study of all body elements, and on the Alpha 156, and on earlier models, with an excellent external condition of the body, one could meet specimens with serious damage to the supporting structures. It is too early for the 159th Alpha to talk about any serious problems, but you will definitely not find any special problems outside. Sandblasting on the front arches, traces of stones on the outer edge of the rear, traces of corrosion on the leading edge of the hood, that's all. Even specimens with a sad fate remain within the acceptable range, especially if all the protective films are in place. Unfortunately, they turn yellow over time, and many tear them off. Severe corrosion of doors and arches, most likely, traces of past damage, not healed in time or with proper quality, the result of accumulation of dirt in the internal cavities after a bath or other road adventures. There are more surprises inside. Surface corrosion on the elements of the rear arches, especially in their lower part, where they are not covered by a locker, is quite easy to detect. In the rear arches, the locker is made of a felt-like mixture and gains moisture over time, so above it is a dangerous zone in which metal that is not coated with mastic gradually rusts. Before the appearance of visible problems, even the oldest instances of cars still have five or six years for sure, but it's worth tackling the problem now especially if you operate the car in St. Petersburg, Moscow, or in another humid region with a wet winter. Repair lockers are made of plastic. The car will become a little noisier with them, but the body will be safe. Often there is corrosion near the rear tow hook, where dirt accumulates and several body elements are connected. A serious problem for all specimens, including those from the greenhouse regions, is the corrosion of the front subframe and trailing arms of the rear suspension. These massive-looking elements are poorly protected from rust and are made of thin steel, so through corrosion and breakage of parts when replacing silent blocks and under-increased loads do not happen so rarely. For a good owner, these elements have already been cleaned, primed, and doused with a thick layer of anti-corrosive, but for most you can expect surprises. Pay attention to the condition of the front boot of the engine compartment. It's huge and solid, besides plastic. The front subframe is partly to blame for the corrosion, it collects dirt and impairs ventilation. Do not forget to take it off sometimes and see what happens to the subframe. The front door limiters here are of an original design, and their resource is not too large. Their breakdowns lay in wait during the warranty period. Bushings wear out, which are not supplied separately for spare parts, and the price of the limiter assembly bites, more than 40 euros. But you can repair the limiter, purchase spare parts for repair too but the replacement procedure itself requires accuracy and is traumatic. In addition, to remove the rear limiters, you will need to remove the door trim and a large speaker. The radiator grill shield does not last long, and the main problem is not the corrosion of the chrome elements, although such a nuisance also happens, but the appearance of plastic cracks in the center, which are difficult to eliminate accurately. Replacement will cost about 60 euros. Breakdowns of cable windows are also common. The glasses are heavy, and the fastening of the glass to the mechanism is light, plastic. Actually, the clip breaks. In the best case, the pin will break and the glass will not go down, following the thrust, but there are also distortions and glass falls down. At the same time, it can break if the impact falls on the corner or protrusion of the attachment. There are complaints about the operation of locks, but this problem is quite rare. There are no serious problems with the headlights either but the lens modules burn out badly after five or six years of operation and require replacement or restoration. The ignition block for gas discharge headlights here is original, from Magneti Mirelli under the number 13073291233, and the installation of a non-native 
one leads to the fact that the optics will work in emergency mode, shining on the floor. The modules do not differ in particular durability. The design is not hermetic and is located in a vulnerable place. Therefore, additional sealing of the connector is recommended. Otherwise, the headlights are excellent by modern standards. They are rubbed out a little. The lamps are relatively easy to replace. Unless in the left headlight, it will require some effort. So long. The quality of the interior here is quite premium. Ergonomics and design are very Italian, but the feeling of quality is there. Especially if the interior is with expensive Paltrona Fra leather, with a black top. Yes, there is enough kitsch here. The trunk release button in the overhead console already speaks of a somewhat unconventional approach, and the large screen of the multimedia system looks alien here. By the way, the button in the overhead console is disabled through the onboard computer menu. Is the meaning not clear? But it's funny. On the go, things are not so smooth. The noise is higher than we would like. A number of elements like the gear lever frame, buttons in the overhead console and seat belt buckles tap and tinkle, giving out the presence of unnecessary gaps and miscalculations in the design, but in general the interior still does not disappoint. I would like a better study, a higher quality of metallization and silver, but this is all important only for those who got into the car by accident. The owner is usually already in love with her and sees no difficulties. But his love must pass a series of tests. The clicks of the limiters are trifles, as is the risk of dropping the glass. An imperceptible, but very important detail can fail, the trapezium of the wipers. It is lighter here, and the tube connections are made of plastic. When the bushings are soured, which happens even on Mercedes, the trapezoid will not just jam, it will break off apart. It can be replaced since the frame can be ordered separately, or it can be repaired with epoxy and fiberglass. But this trouble in the northern regions happens often. The climate control system as a whole turned out to be not troublesome, and the squeaking of drives after 10 years of service is not a problem. But the air conditioning compressor is unsuccessful here, and on almost all engine options. For the sound of a dying compressor clutch, they even came up with a name, dwarf with the circular. Any excess load, and the gnome is right there and overloading the drive belt of additional units on 1.8 MPI engines and diesel engines is fraught with the remnants of the belt getting on the timing pulley and meeting the pistons with the valves. In general, the symptom is dangerous. The system must be refueled on time, not allowed to work with a clogged filter dryer and a faulty thermostatic valve. And even more so, you don't have to drive with dirty radiators or faulty cooling fans. In winter, the air conditioner will not bother you but the alarming inscription, vehicle protection system not available, will haunt every frosty morning. This freezes the electromechanical steering lock, or rather, it's Italian grease. It is better to disable the lock or at least lubricate it with something frost resistant. In general, this car does not like frost, especially if seal speed is worth it, but we will return to this issue in the second part of the review. Electronics. The Italians do not have a relationship with electronics and electrics. But it is not Fiat and Alfa Romeo that should be scolded, but Magneti Marelli. And Bosch's dislike for the Italians, depriving the latter of any alternative. In vain, Fiat founded it in 1919, poor fellows. Electrical breakdowns for Italian cars are still not something rare, but something ordinary and regular. Car won't start in cold weather. Yes, little things, there is simply not enough current on the retractor relay. You need to put another relay, powered directly from the battery. Air conditioner not working? Well, if you have already really checked everything, but there is no power at the clutch, then replace the engine compartment fuse and relay box, the contact goes off there. Which one is not clear, but you can try to sort it out. Europeans change and do not worry, 60 euros is not money for them, but we bother with the bulkhead. If the VDC fails, then the surprises can be completely different. For example, the car is moving, but it does not react to the gas or does not change gears, especially if seal speed is on. By the way, it is also made by Magneti Marelli, model CFC 300. Body level sensors on cars with Xenon? Of course, they sour. And the sensor itself, and its thrust, and both bushings. The sensor is still quite tenacious, but the whole mechanical part is done, how to put it mildly. In general, it is better to make a thrust from the stabilizer rod of one of the Germans with normal oil seals. The left stock lever is a consumable. It has two short wires inside it, but the price of the spare part is low, and it is easy to replace it. 
and it can be repaired. In order not to spoil your mood at all, I will finish the list of problems on the BSI block, the control unit for comfort systems, it is also the cabin relay and fuse box. He can lose the keys, not close the doors, not open the doors. Yes, he can do a lot of things. Do you know who the manufacturer is? I suggest the letter M. Criticism of ignition modules, throttle valves, sensors, lambdas, fans, and other products of this manufacturer is always on any brand of car, from Volvo to Suzuki. It's just that in the cars of Fiat and all its subsidiaries, Magneti Marelli is practically a monopolist. In general, I will not continue further, tears cover my eyes. Brakes, suspension and steering. The braking system on an Alfa Romeo must be a work of art. Yes, the four piston calipers up front are red and bear the Brembo brand. They look spectacular. In road repair, they work. Well, they work quite well, considering that the brakes of the 159th gave out very, very large. German competitors managed to get a similar result with smaller discs and much simpler mechanisms, but you won't admire the caliper there. The resource of the pads is very large, with a normal driving style. The front pads can cover more than 80,000 kilometers. The resource of calipers is moderate, and after 150,000, prevention is recommended. Internal pistons are prone to wedging. There is not a very effective mudguard here, which is important on our roads. The factory pad material is designed for durability rather than efficiency, so it's fairly easy to overheat the brakes, especially if the road is mountainous or twisty and the engine is powerful. If desired, you can pick up something more efficient, softer, and more resistant to overheating. The parking brake drive here is classic, cable, on the screw mechanism of the rear caliper brake cylinder. It seems quite modern and simple, but the cables often turn sour, and the springs are rather weak. So burnt pads are a typical nuisance for a car in winter. Cables are inexpensive, but replacing them is not at all a pleasure. They were carried out right through the cabin, under the carpet. To replace, you will need to remove the floor carpet at the back, unscrew the rear fasteners of the front seats, remove the center console and get to the cable attachment point. In general, take care of the cables, do not forget to pour 2080p cubes into each of them twice a year and regularly check the performance of the system. There are many legends about Alfa Romeo suspension. From the category, it is necessary to change at each MOT, I drove to the Dacia, I replaced it, and the like. With regard to the predecessors of the 159th, this was sometimes true, but everything is not so terrible here. Suspensions are really complex, in front, double lever, in the back, multi-link. And they provide a fine Italian handling character to this not the lightest car. Of course, the ball joints are changed only together with the levers, and the only regularly replaced silent block is the rear silent block of the front lever. By the way, it is extremely similar to Oplevsky Sabovsky, but almost like that. Original components, to put it mildly, are not cheap. Substitutes are quite sane money, but not always pleased with the quality. If we talk about numbers, then the resource of the front and rear suspensions before the first replacement of the levers exceeds 100,500 kilometers. An excellent result by all measures. Then you can buy a new set or restore the old one. It is possible to do this, ball bearings in a steel case, silent blocks are repressed, and in general there are enough developments and a decent margin of safety. The original springs sag little by little, and when hit, the upper coils often break off, which makes the already low car lower. The only serious problem is the corrosion of the rear trailing arm, which in the original version stands like a modest Mercedes of the late 90s in a shabby but running condition. There are no non-original spare parts. All other elements can be changed, and it is strange that TRW parts cause a lot of criticism. In addition to the somewhat inflated repair price, its noise is called a drawback of the suspension. First of all, this is the merit of the not very successful design of the anti-roll bars both their racks and bushings are loaded, and they knock hard. Steering on Alpha 159, without newfangled features in the form of Euro. There is a simple rail with a hydraulic booster and a variable displacement pump. The rail seals are rather weak, and if you do not want to get shaft corrosion and seal failure, check the anthers at each MOT. The rail is the classic, old, ZF, now it's Bosch. If you wish, you can purchase the original, although it is not cheap, about 80,000 rubles. If all of the above is not able to outweigh the craving for the desire to stand out in the stream, 
then do not miss our review of the Alfa Romeo 159 engines and gearboxes. It will be very soon. Transmission. With 1.8 liter engines, the Alfa Romeo 159 was equipped with a mechanical Opel box F17, about which a lot of bad words have already been said, including by me. On cars with engines of 2.2 liters and 3.2 liters, as well as on some cars with 1.8 liter engines, after restyling, a 6-speed M32 manufactured by GetRag was installed. She, too, is from the Opel set and is also not at all problem-free. It causes a lot of criticism especially when paired with powerful V6 engines and 2.0 and 2.4-liter diesel engines. The seal speed Magneti Marelli CFC 300 transmission is brand new. The essence remains the same, but the mechanics are the same, from the M32. The 3.2-liter engines were immediately given the latest Eisen 6-speed TF80 SC at that time, which fans of the brand often present as their own innovative development, Qtronic automatic transmission. Actually, all the boxes were received under an agreement with GM, and only the all-wheel drive transmission here has its own, with a Torsen 3 center differential. Of course, dual-mass flywheels have a limited resource, and after one and a half to 200,000, they will almost certainly require replacement or overhaul. Manual transmissions are not as hassle-free as we would like. The owners of cars with a 140 horsepower 1.8 liter engine, which is paired with the F17, were especially unlucky. This box is already recognized as frankly problematic, and on the heavy 159th it has a very hard time. We strongly recommend regular replacement of the gearbox oil and control of the presence of chips in it. However, instead of the F17, the Alpha gets the M32 perfectly, much stronger and with this engine it's completely trouble-free. Moreover, cars with the station wagon came with this gearbox from the factory, even with a 1.8 liter engine. Whether it is possible to put F16 is a big question, and the Alphists do not bother with such crossbreeding. In general, when buying, listen to the car on the go, or rather, spin the wheels on a posted car and listen to the box. With all other engines, and even as part of seal speed, it mainly works with the M32, which is also the C630 according to the Fiat classification. This box is more durable, but it also suffers from bearing trouble and oil leaks. It's clear with leaks, the seals on GM cars are not very good, the Italians too, so it's just written in the family to lose oil. And without oil, the box does not work for a long time. Bearings here die not only of the secondary shaft, but also of the primary. It doesn't take so long to change them, and the need for this operation gives itself out as a sound on a running engine. When replacing bearings, try to set the thrust shims correctly, old bearings will definitely not last long. The differential does not do its job well. After 10 years of service, it is better to check the axle play and noise. And the best thing is to open and check everything on the spot. You don't need to change the oil so often, but once every 40,000 it's still worth it. But the control of the oil level and the condition of the magnets must be carried out at each MOT. The howling of the output shaft is not audible on the go, and the problem is identified when it is too late. Working in tandem with twisting motors for a run of 150,000 often leads to disruption of the third gear synchronizers, despite the fact that they are triple here. It's good that there are enough Opal parts, and repairs are not so expensive. Just in case, we inform you, output shaft bearings, MP854792-MP430273, MP238750-MP9200, MP MP input shaft, MP797735 slash MP430273 and MP030522 slash MP378917. SNR or Timken bearings are highly recommended for replacement. They are not always found in the original. Occasionally, there are post styled cars with manual transmission F40. Basically, these are cars with diesel 2 liter engines. This box is noticeably stronger than the M32. But for her, there are no standard clutch kits for a non-dual mass flywheel. This box has no problems with the differential, it rarely happens with shaft bearings and with high mileage or depressurization of the unit. It's definitely not worth being afraid of cars with this manual transmission. Seal speed, which is often found on cars with a 2.2 liter engine, is also not to be feared. This is not Easytronic for you, and not even AMT Lada Vesta. The robot on Alpha works much better although there is a congenital drawback in the form of a pause and thrust. But it is very small here, and with powerful motors it is less noticeable. 
Twitching when shifting and regassing is just his style, you need to get used to it. In the event of a malfunction, of course, there will be shocks, and jerking beyond the permissible limit, and delays in switching, and a bunch of other troubles. In case of any serious malfunction, the robot will simply get up, and will not go in emergency mode, like a classic automatic transmission. This box on the 159th is very different in design from its predecessors. First of all, the fact that the clutch hydraulic cylinder here is regular, opal, combined with the release bearing, and the pressure in the system is noticeably lower, the hydraulic accumulator and the electric pump of the system operate in more gentle conditions, which is why the requirements for seals are also not so strict. In addition, the capricious TPS potentiometers used on past seal speed models have been replaced with non-contact sensors that do not require adjustment. But Magneti Marelli, as always, is able to please. For example, oil seals do not work at low temperatures. In addition, there are a number of sensors with a limited lifespan. So, a common error P0914 means that the time has come for the sunset of the position sensor of the gear selection mechanism 71748012. Its price is about 8,500 rubles. Pressure errors occur either as a result of leaks or as a result of a loss of cuff elasticity. Seal speed requires two fluids, a brake fluid in the same reservoir as the brakes, and its own to tell a speed CS. A liquid from the approval sheet MB345.0 for sequentronic is also suitable. Brake fluid and oil are recommended to be changed once a year, in extreme cases, once every three years. The resource of the mechanical part and clutch with regular adaptation of the setting point is higher than that of the manual transmission. Clutch is often enough for 150 or more thousand mileage. The electronic part is mostly troublesome, especially if there is no specialist in this design and a proprietary scanner nearby. The wiring to the pump and the corrugation falls apart, the wiring to the sensors is a little more durable, but also does not live long in our climate. The Qtronic automatic transmission is the Eisen TF-80SC unit, which has long been known from Volvo, Opel, Saab, Ford and Mazda cars. This 6-speed gearbox is somewhat different from the other Eisen TF-60SN 6-speed series I have already reviewed in detail, but the main problems are the same. This is a valve body sensitive to contamination, which is difficult to repair with serious wear, and the absence of original repair solenoids only the valve body assembly is supplied as spare parts, otherwise you will have to use compatible third-party manufacturers and calibrate the automatic transmission yourself. Also, the weakest point of this box is the gas turbine engine with blocking pads and the cooling system, which can greatly reduce the life of the unit. On cross-country cars, traditionally for the kinematic scheme adopted by Eisen, the direct drum suffers, which is responsible here for four, five, six gears. In turn, its problems are associated with the wear of Teflon seals and the drum seat. Also, with runs of more than 250,000 or regular races with full torque, the brake band will require replacement. On Alpha 159, the box cooling system is not the best, with a simple heat exchanger, but this option works fine with diesel engines. With a 3.2-liter engine, the box in urban mode still heats up over 110 and even 130 degrees which does not contribute to a large resource. Oil during normal operation is recommended to be changed every 30 to 40,000 for gasoline engines and every 50 to 60 for diesel engines. For gearboxes paired with a gasoline engine, it is recommended to install an external radiator and filter. For better preservation of the valve body, it is better to change the oil very often, once every 15 to 20,000 kilometers. This does not greatly increase the cost of operation but it can save you from large unexpected expenses. All-wheel drive is exactly the same as that used on the launch of Delta Integral slash Alfa Romeo 155 years 25 ago, Torsen center differential, rear, a simple gearbox. The most vulnerable point of the system is the cardan shaft. Its intermediate support is located exactly above the catalysts and dies first. A spare part from BMW is perfect for a replacement, but the shaft is one piece and you still can't do without card and service. In the transfer case and gearbox, it is important to check the oil every 30,000 and change it every 60. And the main thing here is the check, 0.6 liters of fluid in the dispenser will easily leak if the seals are damaged. And given that both motors and gearboxes do not differ in dryness, it is visually difficult to detect a leak. Just check. Motors. 
almost all motors need to carefully monitor the plastic parts and wiring in the engine compartment. Wiring breakdowns are one of the most common causes of malfunctions in gasoline engines. The 2.2-liter engines have one more unpleasant nuance, the quick-release fuel line connector is leaking, which is easy to understand by the smell of gasoline. If you see a white collar, then immediately change the part. And you don't need to buy an expensive original. In any store with spare parts for the Gazelle you will find what you are looking for. The branch pipe 405.4216 is just one to one. Leaking expansion tanks are also about alpha 159. Change plugs more often, pour antifreeze at the rate and good, high boiling. And, of course, keep the temperature normal, if possible, less than 100 degrees. Low temperature thermostats are available for all GM motors. Part of the components of the cooling system can be picked up from the 156th Alpha, which is much cheaper. With GM engines, the situation is not as simple as it might seem at first glance. The 1.8 liter MPI engine is one to one Opel Z18 XER engine without any special changes. Look at any Opel review, this is a reliable and simple engine, moderately high torque, but it has a hard time on a large and heavy car. And the box is very stretched, so the car will not drive dynamically. The engine problems are the same as on Opel's, a heat exchanger, a weak thermostat, phase shifter clutches, valves, and weak plastic of the cooling system. But the ECU is located here better than on the Opel, and there are practically no problems with breakdowns. The 2.2 JTC motor is structurally close to the Z22YH motors used on Opel. There are enough common parts but the 2.2 JTC has adjustable timing and a different intake. And as a result, he has 180 horsepower in his arsenal, against 155 for Opel. Of the Italian oddities, I note the drive of the pump, oil pump, and balancers in one chain. Now the price of the timing chain kit has dropped significantly and is no longer a problem for users. Moreover, half of the horror stories from the Opel Z22 SE do not apply to this motor. A cylinder head made of normal cast aluminum holds the timing studs and candles tightly. The engine resource is not bad by modern standards, for 300,000 even in our conditions. The resource of timing chains and tensioners and balancers floats depending on the volume of oil in the crankcase, its temperature, operating conditions, and oil cleanliness. The minimum resource when changing the oil every 15,000 kilometers and using low viscosity Dexos 2 oils is about 100,000 kilometers. With more gentle operating conditions, lower operating temperatures, good oil and other favorable factors, you can achieve a resource of over 250,000, which is just fine. There is another nice point, cylinder liners can be replaced without even cutting. There are no repair sizes, but parts are inexpensive and very common. In general, the design is very technological, although with expensive attachments and some lack of quality materials. For fans of tuning, we will inform you that there are also turbo versions of the same engine. For example, B207. And there are also compressor ones, but they are intended for the USA. The potential is limited by a weak cylinder block, which will have to be changed at a torque of more than 400 newton meters. Like other Opel engines, leaks and dirty intake from the ventilation system are guaranteed. The situation is complicated by direct injection. The intake valves get very dirty. After a few years of operation the engine cannot give out full power due to a clogged intake. The insufficient resource of the membrane injection pump has now been practically eliminated. If you refuel in Moscow or St. Petersburg, then almost certainly gasoline has special lubricating additives. In the outback, the situation is more complicated, but the pump can withstand 40 to 60,000 mileage even in such conditions. Of course, if you change the fuel filter in time and prevent the tank from draining. The 3.2L engine also has a lot in common with GM engines. For example, with a turbocharged 2.8Z28 net or aspirated 3.2 with an Thera slash Captiva. The block is the same, but the cylinder head is from the 3.6 liter versions with direct injection. There is nothing surprising, the motor was supplied by Holden from a factory in Korea, and there is nothing Italian in it. In principle, a completely reliable engine. True, the Busso engine was better. But they could not or were too lazy to bring it up to Euro 5 standards. The thermal package is large, and the radiators need to be monitored very carefully. Any contamination or failure of one of the fans leads to serious problems. For example, it breaks the cylinder head gasket, or the engine starts to eat oil. The timing resource is relatively low, it is unlikely to pass more than 150,000, 
but less than 80,000 too. Again, like the 2.2 motor, a lot depends on the operating conditions of the chain. The resource of ignition modules is low, and it is difficult to change them in the back row. The vacuum system of the motor is branched and complex, there are many places for leaks. With this motor, the resource of the corrugations of the exhaust system is small, after 5 years of operation, get ready to change them. The new supercharged 1750 TBI is a new motor, and there is not much data on it. Along with excellent indicators of traction, economy, and noise, problems with the cooling system were noted on early copies. But they are unlikely to be resolved after 7 years. Occasionally, the engine control unit fails, Magneti Marelli is again involved here. But in general, there are no complaints about the motor. Or they are simply difficult to find, because there are very few cars with this engine. At 159 it is practically never found. Diesel engines are mainly represented by versions of 4-cylinder Fiat engines with a volume of 1.9 liters and 5-cylinder engines of 2.4 liters. There are also newer 2-liter engines. All engines are considered very successful. Of course, there are typical diesel problems like a polluted EGR. On older cars, increased attention should be paid to variable geometry turbines. Where the DPF filter has not yet been removed, it can cause a lot of trouble. It is poorly cleaned if you do not make long trips along the highway, and requires a special fluid and service mode for force cleaning. Distinguishes these diesel engines and high sensitivity to fuel quality. In addition, the characteristic troubles of all diesel engines on the Alpha 159 are a vulnerable oil cooler located in front of the main one, and a tendency to carbon formation at the inlet. Nugar can jam the air blocking damper, which is designed to kill quickly and prevent overshoot. The power supply system of these diesel engines is well diagnosed by electronics. By adapting the injectors, you can understand what condition they are in and how alive the engine is. 1.9 liter engines appeared on the Alpha 156 and these were immediately common rail and supercharged versions. The original versions of the engine with an 8-valve cylinder head are still considered a model of simplicity and reliability, but their 280 newton meters and 120 horsepower not enough for a comfortable ride. Version with 320 newton meters and 150 horsepower with a 16-valve cylinder head provides a noticeable improvement in dynamics, but more powerful versions were not installed on 159. It is very important to change the timing belt drive in time and do not forget about replacing the service belt, its pulley, and rollers. The timing belt runs not 150,000, but only 60 to 70, and is often limited in resource by a pump that is prone to wedging. And the service belt with severe contamination of the engine compartment and the presence of problems with the air conditioning compressor can go even less. Glow plugs in regions where it is less than 25 degrees in winter do not last long there are complaints about the need to replace almost every year. Well, the resource of a dual-mass flywheel on the weakest diesel engines will not please. In addition to purely mechanical problems, there is always the possibility of one of the sensors failing or even the wiring to the injectors breaking. The control system is quite complex, and its own malfunctions should not be neglected. The system is also sensitive to the operation of the fuel pump in the tank, if its mesh is dirty or worn out difficult to diagnose engine malfunctions are possible. And checking the fuel pressure is a mandatory procedure for any failures. If the particulate filter cleaning procedure starts too often, and lasts more than 15 minutes, check the turbine for oil leaks. The 2.4 liter engine is the same 1.9 liter, but with one more cylinder. With a power of 200 to 210 horsepower, this is a very sporty option. Moreover, it is combined with all-wheel drive and automatic transmission. Technically, the engine is no different from low-volume ones. The same problems, but slightly more load on the cooling system and slightly more obvious problems with intake manifold contamination. The exhaust EGT sensor is more loaded and fails more often. 2-liter engines differ little from 1.9-liter ones. The cylinder diameter has grown by 1 millimeter. They have become even more sensitive to overheating and overblowing. An EGR here with gas cooling, in a single unit with a thermostat. And here surprises are possible. The heat exchanger is leaking, and if you are not very lucky, you can get a water hammer. Antifreeze leaks are also common. This detail is not cheap, like the new electronic throttle, which is just as overgrown with soot. Unlike a throttle with a vacuum drive, in an electronic throttle, the dampers break when wedging. In general, the engine design turned out to be a little more complicated than that of the 1.9 liter 
but the price for improved traction, increased power, and reduced carbon formation was a slightly more expensive design. With design, everything is clear. Alfa Romeo 159 is one of the most beautiful cars that you can buy for same money. Yes, and the chassis of this car is quite modern and very reliable, with excellent handling, especially in the T versions after restyling and with light engines. The choice of power units is quite wide, among them there are no frankly failed ones, but there is no ideal either. The newest 1.8 TBI looks great, but it's not widely available and hardly cheap to maintain, and Opel's petrol engines are rather boring for such a flashy car. Diesel engines are very good, but in Russia diesel is still not the best choice for a passenger car, there are too many complexities and unforeseen expenses. Unfortunately, in terms of the technical part and the feeling of quality, Alfa still lags behind German premium cars, and is not much inferior in terms of price in the secondary market. This is the choice for those who appreciate beauty and are willing to put up with increased risks. However, do not completely believe the garage bikes. Motors and suspensions are quite reliable, the body is strong, the interior is not bad. Spare parts are also available for sale. You can even find an order used components, although it will take a long time to wait for delivery from Poland or Italy. So if you are ready to overpay a little for beauty, then there are no serious obstacles to this. Just find the right service, which are few even in Moscow and St. Petersburg. In the regions, in general, there is hardly a workshop where you will be competently served especially if your car has a seal speed robot or there are some serious electrical problems.